Have you ever seen a kid with an eye patch? This sweet looking little girl in the photo is my daughter Lily, at the age of two. Congenital cataract and posterior eye segment pathologies have impaired her visual acuity and led to amblyopia in her right eye. The patch you can see on her left eye was supposed to force the right one to work. Amblyopia, also called lazy eye, is a condition when an eye sees blurry image which cannot be corrected with any spectacles. The amblyopic eye vision just remains poor no matter how perfect is the spectacle prescription you might prescribe. This problem actually affects 5% of the global population, so definitely there are people in the audience who had similar childhood experience and dread when they see this terrible eye patch. If you think that your recollections of patching are as awful as it gets, I can assure you that it used to be much worse in the past. These masks from 17th century were used into forced strabismic eyes into alignment. Strabismus is commonly called uh, crossed eyes and maybe both, the cause and the effect of amblyopia. You might think, okay, but that was 400 years ago and eye patching also seems to be quite an obsolete method. I'm sure that today everything is digital, fun and comfortable. Well, yes, except that it isn't. The standard of management in amblyopia still includes patching. Occlusion-based methods became a standard because they are inexpensive, easily available and efficient. The younger the child, the better the compliance, which is the number of hours when the eye patch is worn, the higher the efficacy of this procedure. The problem is that the patching is not accepted well by the little patients. As studies shown, the actual patching dose may be just a half of what was recommended by the eye doctor. Also, the eye patching has a negative impact on the emotions of the child and family. It has been shown that the therapy actually has a more negative impact on the little patient's emotion than amblyopia itself. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Having around a child who just won't wear their spectacles and will tear off any eye patch three seconds after we have placed it makes the parents think about it all the time. We are struggling to improve the least visual acuity We've set a clear rehabilitation goal, but getting there seemed completely out of our reach. This kept haunting our everyday lives, and I thought there must be another way. I wanted to help my child solve my own problem, but also to provide some tools for other parents to support the visual rehabilitation of their children. I was looking for a way to bring my child's style vision therapy into the world of simple stories that would create an opportunity to discuss and explain to little one why beloved parent have to patch the better eye. I worked with a very talented illustrator to create motivational books and board game. The characters in our stories need to wear an eye patch, contact lenses or spectacles, just like patch kits. Nana, Fifi, Coco and Lulu made their way to the bookshelves in a number of homes. They even traveled to school for a blind and low vision children in Africa and went on a mission with a relief team to the Philippines. They've made life much easier for many spectacle wearers and help accept the daily patching. From my own parenting experience, I can tell you that children respond to treatment better if you make them feel more, more comfortable during therapy. Even complex procedures become easier if they are based on stories or games. The gamification helps keep the child focused and involved, resulting in a more compliant patient. Based on this experience, I started to study the vision science and uh, optometry to combine a parent's perspective with an eye care specialist knowledge and use this mom's superpower uh, in my daily practice. I had a chance to watch some leading specialists in this field and learn from them. And it turns out that specialists look at amblyopia from a completely uh, different perspective than the parents. The parents want to 
get the amblyopic eye to see just as well as the better eye. Eye doctors, however, try to achieve a good visual acuity, but what is just as important is binocular vision, which is the biggest advantage of having two eyes instead of just one. So, uh, we know that improving the weaker side vision is extremely important, but is it enough? Once the patch is removed, will the better eye let the weaker eye to engage in a vision process? Since there was no experience of binocular vision before, will the brain be able to utilize its potential? After all, you may be able to learn to write with your right and your left hand, but that doesn't mean you can tie your own shoelaces. Remember that? It used to be on everybody's wish list. You could see the Superman in 3D wherever you want it. It is a simple toy and the idea is based on the David Brewster stereoscope, the first tool that utilized the potential of binocular vision. Two images in a simple optical system have uncovered the realm of stereoscopic photography. Already in the mid 19th century, the device allowed people to see remote parts of the world, exotic animals or even historic landmarks, all in 3D. To tell the truth, a significant part of these uh, photos were not dedicated to children. Before, the viewers had to imagine all the curves in the photo. Now, they could almost feel them, thanks to stereopsis, which is the highest level of binocular vision. Amblyopia impairs binocular vision and makes the brain switch off the information coming from the weaker eye and rely only on the high quality information from the better eye. Therefore, the main therapeutic goal is to activate both eyes and stimulate simultaneously. The simplest way to do this is to present an image in a part to the right and in a part to the left eye. Then, the image makes sense only after the brain has put both parts together. The design of the first stereoscope served as a starting point for a binocular vision therapy tools. You might think that rehabilitation of binocular vision is all fun and games, just like watching the Superman in 3D, but it's not exactly the case. The traditional and commonly used tools for binocular vision therapy have not really changed at all since the era of the first stereoscope. Therapy procedures using these devices require the children to stay focused and involved during tasks that are not exciting at all. Also, they need to work together with experienced therapists who controls what and how the little patient sees. I'm a vision therapist myself, so I know for a fact it's not a piece of cake. Apart from my clinical work, I am lucky to be a part of an R&D team whose goal is to transfer binocular vision therapy into the new era. We have combined the best practices with traditional methodology known from the tools that are used in the therapy nowadays. All that comes together to form a binocular vision therapy concept based on a fairy tale world implemented in virtual reality video games. We can safely say that Brewster's stereoscope is the great grandfather of VR headsets. Virtual reality meets all the conceptual criteria defined for a binocular vision therapy tool. Two separate screens, three-dimensional space, motion sensors, dynamic and immersive video games give virtual reality a significant upper hand in this field. The games are explicitly designed for a therapeutic purposes with settings adjustable to meet patients' visual requirements. By playing, patients can work up to an excellent level of binocular vision at their homes with their doctors who monitor compliance and adjust the therapy settings completely remotely. The fact that excellent binocular vision is sometimes crucial is known to all those young adults who still struggle with stereo deficiency after years of uh, eye patching therapy and are not still not able to pursue their dream career. 
neuroplasticity of the brain does not disappear, but decreases with age. Vision therapy in adults is challenging and requires more advanced tools. My favorite story from my clinical practice is about a young man who was able to achieve perfect sterile vision and make his dream come true thanks to virtual reality. He had worked for three years to get there and out of two years were spent on traditional therapeutic methods which uh, were not fully effective. Four months of uh, fish feeding, hundreds of snowball fights against snowmen, cooking magic potions uh, together with mice when the ingredients may be picked in the right order only once you have seen them in 3D, help him fulfill his uh, life dream and become a firefighter. In my practice, I meet adults who dream of doing warrior's jobs becoming jet pilots, surgeons, police officers. Each of those jobs has a clearly defined set of requirements concerning the level of binocularity. Each of those adults used to be a child and a large proportion of their eye condition problems already bothered them in the childhood. The time from the birth till the age of seven is often referred to as the critical period of vision development. This is the time when the binocular vision therapy may be as effective as it gets. Therefore, it is so crucial to diagnose early, plan the management properly, correct the refractive error and introduce a comprehensive rehabilitation program. Only then can the patient try to get the very best out of their binocular vision and win a better future for, for themselves. Do you need both eyes to see well? No, you don't. But you need both eyes to see excellent. So when did you or your loved ones have their last eye exam?